Number one. Do you secretly fear that if you become wealthy or, or family, friends might not like you anymore? Number two. When you grow up, were you ever told things like, We may not be rich, but at least we're honest. Number three. Did your religious upbringing teach you that it is noble to sacrifice now and your rewards will become in the afterlife? Number four. Did you or do you feel guilty when you started to earn more than your parents did? Number five. Were you raised to fit and not doing anything to stand out? Do you grow up like all Dallas da Dynasty, Gilligan's, Mash, and Beverly Hillbillies where rich people were always presented as unscrumptious and conniving and pernicious and bumbling? Do you have chronic health challenges that doctors can't seem to solve? Do you ever get jealous of people with expensive clothes, cars, houses which may lead up to the development of some consciousness hate the rich mentally? Some kinds of levels do you think it's somehow no noble, romantic, and spiritual to be poor? Do you ever end a negative relationship then immediately place it with another one with a person just like the last one? Have you ever sometimes used judgmental expressions like poor as a church mouse or filthy rich or obscenely wealthy? Have you ever made excuses for failure by saving things like you have to have money to make money or saying things like you have to have money to make money? You have to know somebody or you have to get to the top. You have to get it in at only once you have to get in at the top. Do you relish being the underdog or fighting against the odds all the time? It is possible that you're experiencing health challenges, financial challenges, a business failure, or to evoke sympathy and attention from people you are close to. Are you and are you stable in relationships? Have you have enough money to meet your needs and basically healthy? Just feel like a passing or do you feel like life is just passing you by? Well, how did you score? Tell me your results and enter the score below. If you answered 13 or 15 questions, yes, or if you answered no, to 13 to 15 questions, you have a strong prosperity conscious and can probably pass the quiz along something else. If you answered yes to three or more, you're likely having some issues with awareness of subconscious levels in which you are holding a pattern afraid to leave or comfort zone. You're probably not radically unhappy, but there is some passion. There is no passion and excitement in your life. But there is no passion and excitement in your life. You know something is missing, but you may not know what. If you answered yes to five or more questions, you are likely to be stagnancy cycle, which makes all small advances but experiences setbacks, so that you are not really breaking through the real success of happiness that you desire and deserve. And if you answered yes to seven or more questions, you have headed you have headed towards the already experiencing definite downward track towards serious emotional physical challenges. And this is the kind of a victim cycle. Randy Gage was he's lost everything when he was thirty, transforming his life, becoming a multimillionaire in an impressive way, from immediate action to breaking the pattern and stop the failure cycle. Now if you fall into the last three categories, Randy Gage's Prosperity Power Experiences can definitely help you. Visit www.myprosperitysecrets.com for help in the prosperity thinking. Step 1. The Springboard. Visit my bar. What will you hear? Gossip, complaining, bitterness, negativity. Visit the lunchroom in any big company. What will you hear? Gossip, complaining, bitterness, negativity. Eavesdrop on any family gathering around the dinner time. And what will you hear? Gossip, complaining, bitterness, negativity. I could go on. The point is, is the vast majority of humanity is stuck on the level of consciousness. It's a level of media. It's a level of most conversations. It's a level of low energy. And the very same level that keeps people exactly where they are. Do I need to explain this one? Most people I talk about every day know what they don't want. I don't want this backache. I don't want this headache. I don't want these bills. I don't want to struggle in my business. You know the list. You have one of your own. Unfortunately, that is where the most of us leave it. The nature of our conversations, our newspaper reporting, our radio television shows, our popular talk shows surround us with ideas of what we don't want. It feels good to complain and we don't, we don't feel so alone. We feel heard. We feel relieved. We even sometimes get answers that make our problems lighter. What you don't realize is that we are activating the attractive factor in a negative way. And when we say, I don't want these bills, our focus is on, guess what? The bills. The spirit of life is deliver whatever that we focus on. That's the spirit of life. We'll deliver whatever it is we focus on. So if you're talking about your bills, you'll get more bills attracted by the spending and the energy on it. Most people are in the level of fear. And Eleanor Moody wrote in the 1923 book, You can receive whatsoever you desire. Let us remember that. Fear is only wrongly directed faith. We are having faith in the things we do not want rather than the things that we desire. Again, this is a level most people are on. It isn't bad. It's just it's not very positive, And it probably isn't going to get you health, wealth, or happiness that you want. But we seldom take this process to a level two, which is a rare person who will stop complaining, fighting, and fearing long enough to focus on the opposite of what they're experiencing. Yet, level two begins to bring on miracles, manifestations that we want. Knowing what you don't want is the springboard to your miracles. Knowing what you don't want is simply your current reality. And the current reality can change. So remove negativity. Remove negativity. 
One way to protect yourself from negative influences the world is the largest to abstain from them. I remember reading how Mark Victor Hansen and Jack Canfield forbid any negativity in their offices. I love the idea. I don't watch the news or read papers anymore. And after a while, I begin to see how you are fed on one-sided negativity-heavy news. None of it's designed to help you for your well-being. But you also have to watch your friends, your people around you who share the views of the world with you. Sometimes it's not easy to separate their view from your view. You want to step up from the world or outside because it's turned into the world of attraction based on energy. One way to do this is to remind yourself that the world is general is on a level of complaining. But you want to go up to level, go up the level or two. Beware of the five. Years ago, I attended a network meeting, and these are unusual breakfast for lunch business meetings where people exchange business cards, try to help each other get new clients. I spoke to many of my clients from which I noticed that this same simple and seemed to be at the same time meetings, one observant friend said, it's the same people and they're all starving. That's when I first learned about the concept of, concept of levels. There is, people tend to stay at home the same level in the business social status where they meet friends that usually go into the circle activities, whether the church, work, school, or some club. At the result, they can rarely get out of the level that they are on. That's not bad. You can stay on the level that you are on and do well. But if you want more, if you want to find yourself starving on the level you're on, if you find yourself starving on the level you're on, then you need to go up a level or two. When I was speaking at these network events, I was a notch above everyone in the room. It wasn't not an ego thing. It was a social perception. It was being able to slightly higher my level in the audience simply because of the nature of being the speaker. I was the authority figure. As the higher teacher, I was elevated a slight degree on their level. But that's not good enough. And if you want to achieve big dreams in your business, you need to step up the circle of networks of peers and associates. You need to go up to the group wider, stronger, richer, and have connections. You need to go up a level. How do you do that? In case my book brought me the attention to the other circles of people, the higher levels of networks. For example, when I wrote to the AMA, Complete Guide for Small Business Advertising, for the American Marketing Association back in 1995, I was immediately put on a new level. I was now the author of an important book for a prestigious organization. This caused new people to contact me, all of the people who had their own network of people. More often than not, these networks were higher than any level of anything I'd ever touched before. Here's another example. When I wrote my book on P.T. Barnum called There's a Customer Born Every Minute for the American Management Association back in 1997, I managed to get the attention of famous tycoons like Donald Trump, Kenneth Feldman. Clearly, I had introduced to a new level. And you want to succeed in phenomenal ways today, you need to go up a level or two in your status scale of networks. The good news is that emails can snap you to begin. Anything alive can be reached through an email with some persistence and cleverness. Now I first reached marketing superstar Jay Conrad Livingston, directly mail lo legend Joe Sugar Sugarman, and even Gonzo Daredevil Evil Knievel. I did it all by email. People write me all the time for favors, and now I perceive to be an expert in authority in internet marketing, pioneer. They wanted to associate their name or product with me. I love to help people. I usually give them at least... I usually give people the chance, but I never endorse anything without seeing, using, and loving what it is that they have. This is important for me to maintain my level. And now, people write me from higher levels, too. For example, Dr. Robert Anthony is the man who studied 20 years ago last year. He wrote me after reading my book, Spiritual Marketing. Today, we're co-authors, and I just produced and recorded his legendary audio program, Beyond Positive Thinking. Two decades ago, I was way below his level. Today, we're partners. Keep in mind that we're going up levels in different thinking out of the box. You can create and steal your way on a current level. Brainstorming with your neighbors is the most likely different way for brainstorming with, yes, say Richard Branson or flamboyant owner like Virgin Records. This point is this. The point is this. To achieve goals you've never achieved before, you may need to rise in levels and participate with new people on new playing fields. So, the lessons of this section is to consider your current level, consider your goals, consider your outside influence of networks so you can help achieve them. And you may have to step out of your level into a comfort zone and out of your comfort zone to do it. But the step is well worth taking. To look at this another way, people closest to you will hold you down or help you up. And Randy Gage points out that the five people closest to you will influence your success, will either be focused on one step, I don't want this, or stage, or they'll be focused on step two. What do you want? The people around you who will help you with what you focus on. So... Where do you want your focus to be? Socrates' advice. I love this story. Attributed to Socrates on how to handle negative people. One day a man rushed up to Socrates saying, I have some news to tell you. Socrates put his hand up and stopped the excited man first. Let me ask you three questions, Socrates said. Uh, okay, said the man. Is the news you are about to tell me something you personally know to be true? Well, no, replied the man. I heard it from a good source, though. Then, let's go to the second question, Socrates said. Is the news you want to tell me about someone you know personally? Well, no, the man said. But I think you know the person. I see, said Socrates. Let me ask you my final question. Is this news positive or negative? Well, it's negative. 
Let me see, said the wise Socrates. You want to tell me some news that you don't know personally to be true about someone you don't know at all, and that is negative. Well, it sounds bad when you put it like that. I think I'll pass, Socrates said. Where are your thoughts? Again, the attractive factor is always at work. It is a spirit. It's a spirit giving that gives you what you focus on. Focus on lack, you get lack. Focus on ambition, you get ambition. Focus on goals, you get goals. Dreams, enthusiasm. Focus on control of power, of creative influencing innovative thinking and you attract that you get more of your bad luck if you think of bad luck so the step for one for all and the step one is is all you want to do is notice that you have been focusing just notice what you've been focusing on is step one all you want to do is notice what you've been focusing on where are your thoughts where is your conversation your answers will become the springboard to take you to the next step in this miracle making process man is a magnet and every line and dot and detail of his experiences comes by his own attraction. Man is a magnet, and every line and dot and detail of his experiences come by his own attraction. Elizabeth Town, The Life Power and How to Use It, 1906. Step 2. Dare something worthy. Pull up a chair and let me tell you a story or two. This will set the stage for Step 2 and the miraculous formula for making your dreams come true. Exceed you. When I was a teenager, one of my heroes was Floyd Patterson. Floyd was a heavyweight boxing champion of the world twice. He was also the youngest man in history to win the title. He was a nice guy and often in bad business. He wrote his autobiography and titled it something intriguing, Victory Over Myself. I love the title because the ideal it conveys. It instead of trying to beat the world is trying to improve yourself. Runners call it the exceeding your personal best. In other words, you aren't happy with yourself. Find a way to be victorious over yourself. There is no competition. There is no enemy. There is only the desire to improve yourself. As you improve, the, as you improve, the world improves. Floyd Patterson knew this, and he became the most famous and lovable boxing champion of the world. I met Floyd when I was maybe about 16 years old. He was right about after the bout in Cleveland, Ohio. I managed to crawl over the bleachers, jump a rail, and stand in the path where Floyd would be headed back to his training room. He looked at me with a grant, a gentle, kind smile. I reached up and patted his massive shoulders, and I congratulated him on his win that night. I never forgot it. Floyd was a boxing because Floyd I never forgot it. Floyd was in boxing because of the job that it took him out of poverty, and only his real opponent in the world was the things himself that he didn't like. He worked in his victory over himself. Floyd succeeded. Ask yourself, what do you want to improve in yourself? Peace Pilgrim. Peace C Pilgrim may have been the Mother Teresa or the Gandhi of the United States of America. This kind of woman spent 28 years of her life walking for peace. She dropped by her real name. She dropped her real name. She owned nothing but her clothes on her back. And she only ate of whatever someone gave along her on the path and gave her food or shelter. She walked for over 25,000 miles for peace. She walked a total trust. Because what she was doing was making a profound impact on the world. She was interviewed by the media, seen on television, heard on the radio, and read about in the newspapers. Yet, she was only simply following her own calling. She dared to do something worthy. She wrote, The most important part of a prayer is what we feel, not what we say. We spend a great deal of time telling God what we think should be done, and not enough time waiting in the stillness of God, in the stillness for God to tell us what to do. Peace Pilgrim died in 1981, but her spirit lives on. Her life and words can be found in the online of www.peacepilgrim.net, pp, home, dot, htm, dot. She was and continues to be an inspiration to millions of people. Now I ask you to ask yourself, how does Peace Pilgrim inspire you? Or what is the nudge within your urging you to do? Be a trillionaire. As you see in this chapter, knowing what you want, knowing your calling, your goal, your ideal, your challenge, your dreams is the next step to attracting your desires. Most people have no idea what they want. Or if they do, they think small. I want you to think bigger than you've ever thought before. I want you to... Ade a liquid dignum, or dare something worthy. For example, why not become a trillionaire? According to my friend Brad Hager, CEO of Millionaire Magazine, there are $22 trillion of personal wealth floating around in the world, yet there are so far no trillionaires. Why not because of the world's first trillionaire? Be the world's first trillionaire. Actually, that's my goal. But you can pursue it too. One thing you'll learn in this book is that you can mine and direct it to find your answers from when you have questions such as, how can I become the world's, the world's first trillionaire? Your mind begins to search and find missions. Your question directs it to find a solution. Step two is to occur the attractive factor process involving choosing of what you want and doing it in such a way that you can activate your mind to complete the job for you. And let me explain. What do you want? 
If you realize that you can have anything, be anything, or do anything, then the question becomes is what do you want? Here's the secret or the trick to turning every one of your complaints around into something you do want.